Hi class, now we will go to the uh, brief introduction of chapter 5. This is the psychrometry. So, um, in this chapter, uh, we go to four main points. It is, first is it, what is psychrometry? Second is the properties of psychrometry. Number three is psychrometric processes. And number four, psychrometric charge. What is the psychrometry? The psychrometry is the science dealing with the physical laws of the air and water vapor mixture. You know that in the air, a normal air that you breathe every day and that is the air surrounding you, <coughs> this air is combined of, it's not only the dry air, but it always includes part of the water in term, in the, the term of the the vapor so the the normal air surrounding you is, is the air and a water vapor mixture so that is the the um, we call the psychometry when designing an air conditioning system the temperature and moisture content of the air to be conditioned and the same properties of the air needed to produce the desired air conditioning effect you know, by the end of your study, you will do the thesis, and in the thesis, you will do a part of the air conditioning system. It will contribute to 25% uh, of your uh, total mark. So it means the end, your target is it, it be able to design an air conditioning system. So that's why you have to study the these subjects and also you will learn about the psychrometry. In other words, we can say that the psychrometry is the study of the moist air or the mixture of the dry air and the water vapor. Now, the properties of the psychrometry. Uh, there are some properties here. That means first is the dew point temperature. Second is a relative humidity. Number three is the humidity ratio. Number five is a dry bulb temperature. Number five is a wet bulb temperature. Number six is humidity. And humidity, they divide into specific humidity and absolute humidity. And last is the psychometric ratio. So, what is the uh, dew point? The temperature at which moisture starts to condense out of the air is known as the dew point. Dew point is also known as the saturation temperature. Dew, dew point temperature is determined by moving from a state point horizontally to the left along light of the constant humidity ratio until the upper curve saturation temperature boundary is reached. So what is the dew point? You see the dew point temperature, for example, in Ho Chi Minh City, you don't see much. But if you can go in the um, cool atmosphere uh, location like Dalat, uh, you can see the normal in the early morning. If you wake up, you look at uh, on the lift or you know, even on the glass outside your room you can see some water there. So where does the water come from? That is the dew point. That means, as I already explained, that in the air, normally you got the air and the water. And at the certain temperature, the, air, the water in, in, the, in, the, in the moisture air is not condensed. But when you cool down the temperature or at the early day, uh, early morning of the day, uh, normally the temperature of the atmosphere is very low. So at this stage, the, uh, the water in the most air will be condensed and separate out, and we call that is the dew point. Okay? Okay, next is relative, relative humidity. Uh, rel relative humidity it is the amount of the moisture that's a given amount of the air is holding and amount of moisture that's a given amount of air can hold. 
That means the maximum can hold, we call as a hundred percent relative saturated or is saturated. So, for example, if the air is only uh, have about fifty percent of the water, so in this case, you got the relative humidity is fifty percent. Okay. So the humidity ratio, the actual weight of the water in the water in the air water vapor mixture, we call it the humidity ratio. The amount of moisture per unit of the dry eye, it can be defined as the W equal to M divided by G. In this formula, W it is the humidity ratio. Um, M, it is the um, weight of the air, and G is the total weight of the air and the water together. So, what is the dry bowl temperature? The dry, the dry bowl temperature is the temperature indicated by the thermometer exposed to the air in the place shelter from direct solar radiation. The term dry bulb is customarily added to the temperature to distinguish it from the wet bulb or the new dew point temperature. So it means the wet bulb temperature is the temperature recorded by the thermometer when the bulb is enveloped by the curtain which saturated with water. The accuracy of the simple wet bolt thermometer depends on the how fast air passes over the bolt and how well the thermometer is, is shielded from the radiant temperature of its surround. You look at this thermometer, so both of them is a therm normal thermometer. But in the, the top thermometer, you can see the bowl. The bowl here is, it is a plate that's covered by the silver that you use to contact to the place where you can where you want to measure the temperature and if you keep the bowl is dry you will measure the dry bowl temperature but if the bowl you use and you cover by a curtain width and this curtain width always wet in this case that thermometer will measure the wet bowl temperature Humidity, so we got the specific humidity and the absolute humidity. Specific humidity is defined as proportion of the mass of the water vapor per unit mass of the most air sim simple. Dry air plus the water vapor is it close, closely related to the humidity ratio and always lower than in value. Absolute humidity. The mass of the water vapor per unit volume of air containing the water vapor. This quantity is also known as the water vapor density. The psychometric ratio. The psychometric uh, ratio is the ratio of the heat transfer uh, coefficient to the products of the air of the mass transfer coefficients and humid it at the wetted uh, surface is maybe evaluated by the following equation. Okay, so you got equation. Now the, the psychometric uh, processes. Uh, we got some processes of the psychometry. We call the sensible heating, the sensible cooling, the dehumidifying, uh, he, de dehumidification dehumidifying, uh, adiabatic cooling, that is adiabatic mixing, or the mixing of the moisture air and water vapor. Sensible heat, you know the sensible I explained in the lesson of the, the, uh, uh, the previous lesson, is it I explained what is the sensible heat is and what is the uh, latent heat it. So remember the sensible heat, I mean the heat you can Sensed by the by the change of the temperature, so the sensible heating is it. It is the addition of the heat to the moisture air without the addition of the moisture. It follows a constant humidity ratio line of the psychometric charge.
for example, we got the air here. Uh, the air at the first stage, we got the temperature is T1 and the uh, enthalpy is H1. And after go, uh, and it will be hit by the resistance here. You put the resistance, that means you supply the, the heat Q to the air and the air come out at the state 2, have the temperatures T2 and the enthalpy is the H2. And if you look at the uh, psychometric charge here, this procedure is shown in the line from 1 to 2. And because you don't put any water in, so the humidity of the air is the, be the constant. So you got the humidity ratio W1 equal to W2. So the line 1, 2, it is the, the line is parallel to this, uh, the temperature line. Okay, so you got this picture. The sensible cooling. So the sensible cooling, uh, that is the opposite procedure of sensible heating. That means the heat you try to get out. But in this case, the uh, humidity uh, or the, uh, the, the water amount into the air is doesn't change. So that means you got the sensible cooling. So the uh, sensible heating and the cooling process, addition or removing of sensible heat without change of the absolute moisture content. And note that the relative humidity changes as the temperature is changed. So uh, look at the picture on your right hand side the heating will go to the right of your charge and the cooling is opposite way, that means go in the left of your uh, charge. Cooling and dehumidifying. Cooling and dehumidifying, it is a remove of the heat and the moisture from the moist air. It involves the sensible and the latent heat transfer. So in this case, you see that uh, the uh, beside the heat is removed from the system, but also the the uh, moisture air also be removed out too. So in this case, you can see that uh, the both the temperature and the relative humidity uh, uh, or the humidity ratio uh, of the air will be uh, will be changed. And in this procedure, in the cooling coil, temperature of the air reduced and the saturation point at dew point is rich. So the cooling and dehumidifying, that's in the procedure, you usually see in the, uh, your uh, air conditioner. You see your air conditioner at home, the water is always comes out. That is the water is get out by the dehumidifying dehumidifying uh, procedure. So in this case, uh, further cooling result is a reduction by the absolute uh, humidity. Look at the diagram in your right hand side. You can see that uh, first the, uh, the most air will be cooled down and when it touch the uh, diagram, this, uh, this curve is shown to the uh, saturated uh, uh, moisture air, so you got the dew point. So at the dew point, the moisture is start to be removed from the air. So we got the de de dehumidification procedure. All right. Okay. So this one, you got the cooling and dehumidifying. Okay, and uh, you can see this one is a. Uh, uh, procedure that happen in your uh, air conditioner. The refrigerants go into the evaporator and then the air is, is uh, just flow through the, uh, the evaporator and the air will be cooled out and part of the water will be moved out too. So you see the water is, will come out of the uh, evaporator. Okay, and in your 
in the diagram in your left hand, in your right hand side, you can see this is that uh, the air from uh, started from the state one. It will touch the point they call the dew point at the temperature of T D one. That means the dew point temperature. And then after that, the one amount of the water or the one amount of the vapor will be removed from the moist air. So the air will go out at the state state two. So you see that the humidity ratio W1 will be different from W2. Okay. Okay, the first process we call the heating and uh, humidifying. Heating and humidifying is, is the addition of the heat and the moisture to the moist air. It's also involved a sensible and, a, and latent heat. That means you see that beside the heat, you add in the, uh, the process, you also add some water in. So it means the air will be increased in the temperature and also increase in the moisture or the humidity as well. Okay, the fifth process we call is humidifying. That means in this one we only put the, the water, add the water more into the moist air. So the humidifying is the addition of moisture to moist air without the addition of the, the heat. So in this case the temperature will keep the, the same but the humidity will, will change. So uh, you can see in this picture there's the four main process that we just mentioned. Uh, uh, that means the heating, cooling, humidifying and dehumidifying process. I mean in the picture you got the, in the four direction to present four different procedures. Uh, adiabatic or evaporative cooling. A psychometric process which involves the cooling without heat loss or gain. The sensible heat loss by air is converted to the latent heat in the added water va vapor. And uh, evaporated uh, adiabatic mixing of the moist air and the stream. The uh, psychometric process that involves no net heat loss or gain during the mixing of the true air stream. And you can see this one, you, you have the two mixing of the two stream and it's governed by the equation is uh, total m dot h plus q dot equal to total out of the m dot h with q is the external heat you put into the mixing. So that is the, and finally this one is psychometric charge psychometric here I will explain more clearly in the in the full lesson so uh, that is about the uh, short introduction of the psychometry again you have to read the uh, uh, the theory chapter that I will provided to you to understand clearly before you go into the lesson and do remember to do the quiz as requested by the university. Okay, goodbye and good luck.